I'm constantly being asked, what is a better framework for doing native mobile applications using JavaScript? Is it React Native? Is it native script? I come from the land of native script. I've been doing native script for a long time, but today I'm gonna check out React Native for the first time ever. Never touched it before. You're gonna see me doing this and you're gonna see me messing up. And today I'm gonna try it out and see what it's like. I'm not gonna go deep. I'm not gonna build a full application. All I need to do is set up my environment, follow the instructions on the website, see how far I get with a Hello World application and get the feel for it. Like I said, I've never done this before. You're gonna be watching this as I do it now. And then if it goes well, later on, maybe I'll even do some tutorials with React Native so I can compare it and get the feel for it and see how it compares with native script so I can better be equipped to answer these kinds of questions. If somebody comes to me and says, is it better to do animations in React Native or native script? Is it better to communicate with the underlying framework and call native APIs with native script or with React Native? That's a common point of contention. And I may even do Flutter too later on. Don't know anything about Dart either. So let's check this out. First thing I'm gonna do is Google for React native because I don't even know where it is. Okay, reactnative.dev, pretty simple. Great, they have a little animation here, React Native. I'm gonna get started. There is the introduction. So I may skip around just so this video is not hours long. It may take me hours, but we're gonna keep this a little bit quicker. All right, so this says interactive examples. Not sure how that works. Let's click on this little button right here. It says device connected. Let's try iOS, run on your device. Device ID, QR code, interesting. So I'm not sure how this works. I think I need to download the Expo client for iOS. All right, I happen to have an iOS device here myself and I'm gonna go ahead and download Expo. By the way, I got a bunch of coffee ready so that I don't fall asleep doing this. Mm. All right, Expo downloaded and installed. Now I'm running it. It doesn't say that I can just scan a QR code. I think I've downloaded the right app. It says Expo client, but I don't see an easy way to just scan the QR code that I see on the site here. So it's telling me I need an Expo account. All right, I guess I'll have to set up an account. So I'm gonna sign up for Expo here. First name, Alex, last name, Ziskan. So a bit of friction there but it looks like I've created the account. I'm gonna save the password. Let's see if I can go ahead and refresh this. No current projects open. How do I scan the, the code here? Not sure. I don't see an option to scan a QR code here. I hope I have the right app. Let's see, running on your device. Maybe I need to log in here. So I'm gonna do that. Username Alex Ziskin one there's my password, log in. Okay, I need to go to the projects tab. I don't have a project, so I'm not sure why it's telling me I need a project. I'm gonna save this and see. Ah, once I saved it, it appeared here on my phone, good. So I'm gonna click on that on my phone. It's opening my project, so that's a good sign. Ah, there we go, it says try editing me. Now I'm gonna go ahead and edit this. Try editing me, I'm gonna say try Hello world. I'm old school like that. Wow. Does it even have a delay? It's like maybe a second and a half delay between when I edit it and it's showing up here on my phone. Very nice. I like that. So that's cool. It's a nice little way to get immediate feedback and to dive right in learning this thing. You may have seen my videos on how to do this with native script with the native script playground. It has a similar experience and I don't consider that to be a really serious tool. It's good for learning, but I wanna set up the whole environment on my local machine and start that way. So this snack player that they have is it's pretty nice, but I wanna get this set up. So let's continue and see how I can do that. Ah, environment setup. Setting up the development environment. That's what I need. Expo is the CLI that's used here for React Native development. You wanna use the React Native CLI. Huh, so you can either use the Expo CLI or the React Native CLI, I don't know. I'm not new to mobile development, so should I use the React Native CLI then? I guess so, I'll do that. So there's two tabs here, which is nice. Expo CLI Quick Start, 
and react native CLI quick start. That's what I'm gonna do. My development OS is Mac, target. Do I really need to specify that here? Okay, these are just instructions. So I hope the instructions are the same for iOS and Android because I don't wanna be doing two different CLIs. Watchman, do I need Watchman? Oh boy. Highly recommend you install it for better performance. You know, I just wanna get into the React native stuff, so I'm gonna skip that. Xcode I already have, CocoaPods I already have. I do have my iOS environment set up already. Ah, here we go. React native command line interface. This is what I wanna install right here. So they recommend you use NPX to run React native CLI, which is keeping your CLI off the machine and always using the freshest version. Okay, well, let's do that. Let's create a new application right here. Ah, finally, we got to some code. Well, not yet code, but something that's typed in. Let's create a new directory called RN for React Native. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that command. NPX React Native init. Awesome project. I wonder how many awesome projects there are right now in the world from people following this tutorial. Whoa, welcome to React Native. Look at this thing, that's so cool. Downloading template, okay. Copying template, processing template, and then installing dependencies. All right, while it's doing that, let's take a look at the rest of the stuff. This is not necessary if you're integrating React Native into an existing application, okay. You can also use a specific version template, which I'm not gonna use. I'm gonna use the latest and greatest. You can also start a project with a custom React Native template like TypeScript with the dash dash template argument. Really? Now you tell me? So am I gonna get just a plain old JavaScript project this way? I really wanted to use TypeScript, so I hope I still can, but maybe it won't let me unless I use this specific template. Okay, if the above command is failing, so far it's not failing, but you can use the installed version of the React Native CLI. Okay, so far we're good to go. It's not failing yet, but it's also not done yet. So I'll let you know in a minute. Running your React Native application. Well, we're not there yet. Okay, looks like it finished. So here are the run instructions for iOS. We got to go to Awesome Project. Let me just check my directory here. CD Awesome Project. Great. Now we can just use this command right here. But before that, I want to open this up in VS Code because I'm probably going to need that anyway. All right, I'll come back to that. Let's go ahead and execute this run and see what happens there. Let me copy that paste it here. All right. And the Android version of that is pretty much the same. I'm going to start off with iOS. I'm going to go ahead and kick that off. This is going to launch my sim. Very nice. All right. It's building. Let's take a look at the instructions after that. Okay. I'm not sure what this is. What is Metro? First, you need to start Metro, the JavaScript bundler that ships with React Native. Why do I need to start that when I've already kicked off the build for iOS? Is it going to work now? Not sure, but I probably should have been following these instructions instead of the ones printed out on the CLI. I'm going to skip this for now and just come back to Metro, whatever that is later. Start your application. Okay, this is the command that I actually just kicked off. So now it's building and supposedly we'll end up with something like this. Yep, that should be good. Modifying your app. Okay, let's take a look at this app code right now. All right, so this looks like it is all JavaScript and not TypeScript. I'll deal with it for now and I'll try the TypeScript version a little bit later. Here is the app.js file. I'm guessing this is where things kick off for the first time. All right, so there is import React, a few things from React Native, like scroll view, style sheet, safe area view, view, text status bar. Okay, I can kind of figure out what those are. These are probably local components. No, they look like they're React Native libraries. And then we have this, this is the app. And for some reason, I'm getting an error here. Type annotations can only be used in TypeScript files. What is this? I just had another window pop open automatically and it looks like Metro is running. So maybe this is a separate window that needs to run with Metro. That was the other step, step one that I skipped over, but maybe it automatically does it for me if I don't do it. And that looks like the case. So it looks like it's gonna bundle for me using Metro and it's gonna do that on the side. All right, so, so far the build process is going. Looks like it did build over here for the simulator, but then the JavaScript is getting bundled separately, which is an interesting take. It actually does the app first, and then it finishes bundling or not sure what's going on there. Okay, so here is the sim with React Native app, hello world of that running. 
Okay, so we've got a tutorial in here, which is kind of convenient. It actually opens up the documentation right from the application. I'm gonna change this up a little bit and I'm gonna create my own UI here. Hopefully I'll have a button there and maybe uh, a little label that I can change with that button. And that's really all I wanna do today. So let's go back to the docs. It looks like I have the app running and I'm gonna try and see if I can figure out what's going on here with the app. So we have a scroll view, safe area view, and here is a view with some text engine Hermes. Is that what I'm seeing here? Not really. Step one, let me see if I can find that. Aha, uh -huh, here it is. So let's call this step Alex. I'm gonna save that. Hey, that was really quick. That update happened before I could even switch to the sim. I'm gonna pop these open side by side so we can see. Step Alex two, save. Wow, okay, that is an insanely fast update. The live syncing is just crazy fast. That is really nice. So hopefully the live syncing works no matter how many complicated changes you make because the startup process is really long and I don't wanna keep starting up. But if the live syncing is this fast, this really is a nice benefit to using React Native. As long as live syncing and whatever they call it, maybe they call it HMR, maybe they don't use Webpack here. I don't know, whatever the terminology they use here. It looks like it's super fast, which I'm really impressed by. Okay, so my next task here is to actually have a button and a text field so that I can change the text in the text field by clicking that button. So let's go back to the docs. I think I'm done with all this. I want to go ahead and see how to do interaction. Handling touches. Maybe they have a UI section here. Let's see. Ah, core components and native components. Views and mobile development. Okay, so this is really good stuff. I probably should read all this later on, but maybe I just wanna skip around and see and pull out what I need. All right, so view is some kind of generic component, kind of like native script, I guess. I'm not seeing a UI section. Maybe it's in design, no. Native components and modules, direct manipulation. No, that's not it. Is this how you make a button? You use a generic view and you kind of make your own button with, well, where is the tap? Touchable opacity? Huh, that can't be. There's gotta be a button element, right? Let's go to components. Ah, <laughs> so doc section just has the basics and some other stuff. Components is its own documentation section. And there's button. Very cool, okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna copy this right here. Hey, there's a button example. Let's just do this. I'm lazy, so I wanna type as little as possible. I'm gonna use this right here, this whole chunk. View, and text, and button all together. Let's go over here. Let's remove all this stuff inside of that safe area. There, and I'm gonna paste that view in here with the text and the button. Let's save this and see if this complains or explodes. And we have an explosion. Can't find variable button. Really? Well, why not? <laughs> do I need to actually import button before using it or something? I think I do. But where do I import it from? From React Native directly? See, if I was using TypeScript, this would be really helpful. Ah, there we go. Okay, so we've imported button from React Native, and there's the button. I can tap on it. Can't find variable alert. All right, so that button does something. It triggers alert.alert, .alert, but we don't have alert defined, so I probably should go ahead and import that from React Native. Let's tap on that. Hey, simple button pressed. All right, I have an alert, and it's a native alert being triggered. I'm curious to see how this will look on Android. We'll check that out shortly, too. Now, I need to change this text up here. So the title on press handler are required. That's what it says now, but we're going to change that. I'm going to say counter is add a variable called counter in here, and I'm probably going to mess up how I do this initially because this is React, so now I'm making a stateful component. And I think that this is probably a stateless component, so we probably don't wanna mess with state in here. And I should probably break out and make my own separate component, but I really just wanna get going here, so how would I do that? Well, let's see, I'm gonna say let counter equals zero. This is probably not gonna work, by the way, but we'll see. I'm gonna save that, counter is zero. Now when I tap on the button, I wanna say counter plus plus. Let's tap on the button. 
And of course, there is no update there, probably because I don't have state management here and it's not a stateful component. There's no change detection happening. Let me back up a little bit and say alert, oh, counter equals zero. I'm gonna say simple button pressed, but instead of that, I'm gonna say counter is, and I'm gonna go ahead and add counter inside of that text. Let's check this out. Press me, counter is zero. Well, I also want to update that counter when I press that. So first thing I'm gonna do is say counter plus plus, and then I'm gonna alert. Okay, counter is one, counter is two, counter is three. So the alert actually works because it's creating that new alert from scratch every single time I tap on the button. So that is working. But in order for this to actually reflect in that label, I would most likely need a stateful component. And I don't know yet how to do that here with React Native. I know how to do it with React, but not with React Native. Probably the same. So far, I was able to get up and running with React Native in real time. I started this video 30 minutes ago. It's gonna be edited down to eliminate all the pauses and all the times I've been waiting for the build process and all the times I say um and uh and e eh and ooh. <laughs> it's gonna be edited down. So it's not gonna be 30 minutes, but um, in 30 minutes, I was able to get up and running with React Native and I am already feeling productive. So now all I need to do is just start looking up and building components and combining the components together. My first impression of React Native is really easy. It updates very quickly. I like it. How does it compare with NativeScript? I, I can't really answer that immediately because I know what NativeScript's strengths are, and that's direct communication with the underlying APIs, with the native iOS and Android APIs. So I will dig into this a little bit more. Let me know down below if you want me to explore this further. I just wanted to try this out to see how React Native feels. Maybe I'll dig into it as a video. Maybe I'll do it as a live stream. Maybe I'll build something as another video here on this channel. Let me know down below if you wanna see that. Also, if you're interested in Flutter, I can give that a shot as well. So for now, this has been just me trying out React Native, getting it going with it. And this was my first time trying it. So thanks for sticking with me and for checking this out. If you wanna see more framework related tech stuff, let me know down below in the comments and subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And I'm done with my coffee.